Hey beautiful people, I'm going to throw this in at the start of the video um, because I've been using my new bag today, okay, and I just wanted to say it's gorgeous, love it. Um, I had to go to a doctor's appointment in at the hospital and they loved it too, thought it was stunning. But anyway, what I was going to say is Knowing now, after using it, the next one I make, I will be making the handles a bit longer. Maybe three inches to each one. So I would, because like it's fine when you're carrying it like this, okay? Plenty of room, no worries. Beautiful when you use the crossover. Lovely. Okay. Gorgeous. Oh, put it around back to front. Oh, I didn't. Had it right away. Beautiful. But if you've got a lot of things or whatever and you want to carry it like that, there's no room. Really. The handles, I feel, could be a bit longer. Look at that. Okay, uh, a little bit of length isn't really going to hurt anything I don't f find and you know to me it would just make it that little bit better, a little bit more length on the on the straps. So I just thought I would um, put it in at the start of the video. Okay, turned out gorgeous. And the feet perfect position beautiful so I'm very 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 happy with it guys I'm, I'm like really really stoked I really am I've, I've received some um, amazing comments about it today so I did so that has has made me really really happy also alrighty I'll get going so I can edit this and get it out to you bye for now Good morning, beautiful people. We're going to do Bowl Me Over 2.0. All right. All righty. Now, this one, yeah, it's a bit different to the others. So, I, just one second. Sorry everyone, I forgot to grab the paper. Okay, so here's your cutting layouts. You've got two different ones you can choose from. Okay, this is if you choose to do it, quilt all your pieces from one piece. And this is the suggestion if you want to quilt from two separate pieces to make it a bit more manageable if you're doing it on a domestic sewing machine. All right, so you need to choose which option you would like. And then over here, oh, and I've rubbed off some of my um, block out there. And I don't know what I've done with my pen now. I'm a knucklehead sometimes, I really am. Okay, so I went one better and I ended up blocking out the rest of the measurements there. I had these ones done, but not them ones there. Okay, so for your coordinating fabric, you have two options because you have the option of making the bag like that, okay, where you have two handles and the carrying strap. Or you have the option of doing just shoot. 
the option of doing just long handles and no carrying strap okay so if you choose that way this is the layout suggested to use for cutting your fabric and if you do it with the handle and the carrying strap this is the layout suggested on your coordinating fabric okay so it's entirely up to you because I usually don't follow this anyway because I mix my, my stuff up quite a bit. Um, not in the sense of getting it wrong, in the sense of, of how I choose my fabrics, as you'll see when I go through the list of what we need. All right, so I'll put this aside. Okay, so I'll go through the coordinating fabric first and you need your bias binding, okay? Then you need to cut four facings, bindings. Your carrying strap, this is for option one. Okay, there's two pieces there, one is longer than the other. This is um, for your handles, carrying for option one. You need your pocket A binding. There's one piece there. Your side strip bindings. You've got two. And your carrying strap tab for option one. Then we have our front flap facing. You also, no, I'll say that at the end. This is um, for the pocket B. This is B2, but you can do that out of fabric or mesh. Okay, I chose to do mine out of fabric. Now that is, um, that was B2, this is B1, so this is the top, because this is a zippered pocket on the inside, alright, so that's going to be the top, the zipper will be down here, and then this part here will go underneath. Then there's pocket C, and you need two pieces for that, and that's inside the bag. Also, um, this pocket B, it can be mesh. If you choose it to be fabric, you need to cut two pieces. So two pieces for the bottom and then two pieces for the top. All right. Then you need your piece for your stabilizer sleeve. Now, I um, you also need a piece for your pocket A facing but i'm doing mine a bit different because i'm i'm attaching my magnets a bit different to how the pattern suggests so i'll be sort of covering those a bit differently to how you would with the by any magnets but i'll show you how to do both okay and then from your quilted pieces you need to cut your front and back facings your two pieces for your zipper strip this is pocket A on the front this is the flap for pocket A You got pocket D1 that is on the back. And this is 
back pocket D2. Side strip. And that's the front and the back of the bag. Then what we need for our hardware is you got three different pieces here for your zipper tape. Then we have our strap stabilizer. Okay, so that's for that's more than likely my um, adjustable shoulder strap, and then this is the two handles. You need a piece of fold over elastic, then you need two little tab pieces if you choose to do option one now these are the stabilizers for the straps for option one you also need um, two pieces of interfacing that you need to cut and one is for the flap and one is for the pocket a okay but I didn't cut those um, purely because I'm going to be using a bit of Decaville underneath um, the material I used to go over it. So I'm going to put some of that down instead of using um, the facing. I'm also going to put some feet on the bottom of my bag. So I'm going to try and nut out where they're meant to go also. They're totally optional. They're not in the pattern. I just chose to do this. Um, you're also going to need two swivel hooks two D-rings you could use triangle rings if you wanted to or, or rectangle rings it's totally your choice um, as per what you know aesthetics you want to use you need a slider and you're going to need four zipper pulls I'm going to use my um, novelty pulls, my Wicked. And then I'm choosing to put on a handcrafted badge. Let me see if I can't get this. There we go. In a bit better light. Handcrafted. I'm going to put that on the front. I'm more than likely going to put that on the flap of the front pocket. So I have that and... Let me sit this down that is what you put on the back of it and then these are my magnets guys okay now these are a bit different to if you use the sew-in magnets from by any which being in Australia getting that type of stuff over here is quite expensive for us so instead of the sew-in magnets I'm going to be using the ones with the little lugs and the little washers that go over them to hold them and, and instead of one magnet I'm going to use two because I decided to use the little 14 mils instead of the bigger ones I do have the bigger ones but I just I thought I want one on sort of each side of it so I'm going to use two so as you guys know if you um, if you watch my videos and that I use these folders uh, they have a clear front on them and then they have clear pockets inside and I put the pattern in there and that way I can mark it um, with your dry erase markers as you can quickly see I'll just quickly show but I'm not going to show for long all the marks are gone so I can mark it and then they just wipe off and then in the back I put in the labels so I stick them in here once I've removed it from that particular piece and they're ready 
to use again for next time. And the packet that the pattern comes in, I keep that and I use that when I'm getting all my pieces ready for that particular bag. I put the hardware and everything in there to keep it all together. Just helps keep things a bit organized. All right, so what you want to do is if you haven't, you need to do your bias binding. So get your piece of material for your bias binding and cut your bias binding. Then we're going to go on to doing our straps. So you want to get all your pieces for your handles. So if you're doing option one, you're going to need your strap tab. Your handles, your two pieces for your handles. And then the big um, two-piece one for your carrying strap. So you're going to want to get your tab piece. And we're going to fold it in half lengthwise so it's longer and then we're just going to sew quarter inch seam down there then we'll turn it right side out while we're doing that we'll get the really long piece and the other shorter piece for the carrying strap the adjustable and we're going to put them right side together and take them to the machine we're going to sew a quarter inch here okay quarter inch seam then what we'll do is we'll open it out this way we'll iron that so we'll iron the seams open and then we'll sew down the very edge of each piece of our seam to keep it flat like that so when we sew it around and put our stabilizer in, the stabilizer doesn't get hooked up. So they're all sewed together now. There's the two handles. And then you take it to the iron, press the seam open, then turn them right side out and give them a press again. This is the tab one. Now, when you do that one, you then need to take it over and cut it in half. Okay, so we've got two pieces, and for the adjustable strap, here is it sewn with a half inch, and then just sew down the edges. And then we just want to iron it. So iron your seam open, then turn it right side out, and we will put the stabilizer straps in there. Alrighty guys, I have turned it right side out, I inserted the stabilizer and then you just want to sew all four edges. With the handles, the fabric doesn't get turned in. <coughs> also uh, with the tabs, you just leave it as it is and just stitch across the ends. With the carrying strap, it does get turned in. And I just wanted to quickly show how I do that in case some people find it difficult. So what I do is I have it so that when you put the, the stabilizer in, it tends to stick to a certain side. So you find the side that it sticks to. Now this one is sort of attaching itself to this side here without the seam. So what I do is I push that part in. So it lays flush against the stabilizer, you see, and then I fold that part in. And then I just use the stiletto to make it all sit nice. And that's how do I end up looking. 
and the other end is done the same. And I have to just fiddle with that corner and fraction there, but you know you guys don't need to be on here while I'm doing that, but there we go. So, and then we're just going to do um, a top stitch or four edges, okay? And I forgot on my live last night, I was as nervous as anything, if you couldn't already tell. Um, I forgot to show my machine, my machine that came. So there it is, straight sewer. I am absolutely loving it. I really am. It is a dream to sew on. Um, I have it set up with cotton and in all honesty as much as I like the other one I actually am preferring this one better um, yeah to my other industrial over there that I have set up with the Rosant thread uh, sorry with the um, Tech 70 thread um, I'm actually enjoying this other one so much better but I'm giving it a bit of a run around now with um doing this pattern so we'll see how it goes with everything else so yeah i forgot to say it's um a vma a industrial so it's essentially a faff rebranded so it is that machine but um i'm quite happy with it all right wow okay they disappeared very quickly disappearing all right so on our carrying strap on the side with the seam there's a measurement page four and let me see if I can find it because it's fading fast there and there and on the opposite side here and here all right, because then, okay, so we want our slider and go up and over now you want to mark the end of your strap, sorry, not mark, line up the end of your strap with that measurement, and then we're just going to go to the machine. So we'll box with an X in it. Okay, so once that's done, I'm going to follow our strap down, put on your, your swivel hook. So make sure the hook is on the top where there's no seam. So go down. then take the uns take the side with the seam thread this up and over Then we just want to get our last swivel hook, insert it, find my marks, there we go, right there. So line, you end up with your mark, take it to your machine and sew your box with an X like we did just here okay alrighty guys so that one's done and we can set that aside now what you want to do is grab your facings the quilted the front and back facings that are quilted okay and then you also want to get your tab have both your facings like this and on page five there's a measurement 
where it wants you to measure in. Draw a line down. Okay, so that's from the end in. And then also from here down another line. All right. And then get your tab. Put your, put your D-ring on. Line it up like so, but have your D-ring down. You could even leave it off if you wanted to while you do this. Do your X. Okay, but go down to that line that you marked here. All right, that comes across. So do your X, end it, and then you'll find, once you do your X, you see how your strap is a bit longer than this part? That you need it like that because you want to push it up. So you bring that. Hang on, I'll get a clip. Alrighty. So you want to bend it up so there's a hump. And then line up the bottom with the bottom. And just sew across that. Okay. So then it will look like that. All right. Then you want to bind both front and back, top and bottom. Okay, so get your facing bindings. You should have four pieces and bind that however you bind it. I always bind them like this. So I fold my binding in half, I iron it, then I use double-sided tape to fold the edges in to the middle. Then I will fold it like this. And I'll sew it down. Okay? And I'll do that to the top and bottom. All right, lovelies, here we go. That one's done. That one's done also. So we're going to sit them aside now. And then we want to take our flap for our front pocket. On page five, there's a measurement that it wants you to mark in from each side and then up a certain measurement and put the flap there, sew it down. Um, then it wants the, hang on. Sorry guys, I didn't have this over here because I wasn't expecting to go this far. But once you sew the magnet down, then take your facing, no, it'll be that way, and sew around the edge, one eighth all the way around. Then there's um, a circle. Get the circular ruler that it states the size, and round this corner and this corner. Okay, but I'll show you that when I get to that part. Um, my my magnets are different and I've got to do different measurements because I'm doing two instead of one. All right. All right, lovelies. So I put them on and that's my facing to go over the top to cover it. There they are there. So now I'm going to sew this down and then I will round the corner. Okay guys, so I have put the facing on and I marked my curves here and I stitched them too, see? So now I'm going to cut that off.
then we just need to bind our flap okay so we'll bind all around here we'll start here we'll come down and around and up that's also the um, bias that we'll use okay there's no separate piece of binding um, cut for this flap so we use our bias to bind this all right lovelies that is bound down beautifully and when I put the magnets on I had to put the stabilizer down and then after I put the facing on I put the nameplate and then I just put another piece I put stabilizer over the top to stop anywhere but then I put another piece of matching material over that and I didn't really want to put two lines through here so I just used a bit of fabric glue and sewed it down at the sides then I, I put the binding on okay so our flap is now complete we can sit that over there with the other pieces that we done next up you want to get your pocket A bottom okay and we're going to put a, a line on it you're going to measure from the top down and draw a line from side to side okay now that measurement is on page five then you want to measure in from the left in from the right and a certain measurement down and that is where you're going to put the other magnet all right you're going to sew that down now the flat facing you want to put it right sides together like so hang on i'll just remove this tag so you want to put it like that okay so your quarter inch along here once you sew the magnet down take it to the iron press it up and then just sew the other three edges to keep it in place okay once you've done that then bind the top of it I am doing different magnets to the by any ones so my facing went on the back okay because I'm doing I showed I was doing the pronged magnets so I put them down I marked in my measurements and put them on and I put stabler stabilizer over the top and then I put another piece down and I tucked it under here to give a nice edge and then I sewed the other edges that beautiful all right so I'll take it and I'll bind the top now all right lovelies there we go bindings all done so we can sit that aside now now we are up to pocket B now depending on how you've done this is depending on what you chose is going to decide how you've done it um, if you chose mesh then you just need to sew your mesh to your zipper okay so you would have your mesh like that you would put your zipper down right sides together sew it then bend it back up and sew it down again and then do that top and bottom okay or you could do how I normally do it and I bind the zipper so if you choose to do it that way you would cut another two pieces of binding you would then fold the binding up I would cut two inch I'd cut it I'd fold it in half I'd iron it put down your um, double-sided tape fold them in like I showed you earlier that I done with the straight binding and then I would sandwich the mesh between it 
and sew it down. Then I would take that to my zipper and then I would sew it down. And that is how I would attach my mesh, okay? So if you're done mesh, go ahead and do all that. If you chose material, you want to get your B1 pocket because you should have two pieces. Put wrong sides together. And then we're just going to go and stitch one eighth around all four edges. And we're going to do that with B2 also. Okay. So wrong sides together like so. And stitch one eighth all the way around the edges. All right, there we go, lovelies. They're um, basted together. Now, page seven is gonna give you the zipper length that is required for this pocket. And all we're gonna do, if you've got directional fabric, pick which side you want. I want that side so what we're going to do is right sides together put it down I'm going to go and sew along this bottom edge here okay then I'll sew it down to cover that raw edge all right so I've sewn it down okay and then I pressed it up all right now I'm going to go and stitch this here down alrighty so there we have it okay now I'm going to sew this right sides together line up your sides here take it sew it down the same as we did last time there we go guys sewn down zip pull is on so we can put that bad boy aside also guys i forgot to mention quickly with this pocket here the one that we just done pocket b don't forget to cut it down to size, okay? So measure from the top down and remove any extra that might be on here from the, the bottom of the pocket, all right? Okay, now we can truly sit him aside again and we're going to go on to pocket C, which is a gathered pocket. <coughs> Excuse me, guys, my throat is still not good. Um... So what we want to do is lining sides together and we're just going to stitch around it with the 1 8 seam and then what we need to do is take our fold over elastic and we're just going to bind the top of it okay once we do that here we have it everyone sewn up now the elastic is shorter than the pocket okay and that is by design because what we need to do is we need to stretch our elastic when we sew it so it will then gather the pocket in okay so the best way to do that is put a pin or a clip on each end and then as you us just sew a little bit here on this end just sew it a little bit maybe that much quarter inch half inch in and then after that first initial amount then we can stretch the elastic so it will fit the size of the pocket so you want a, a gentle stretch all the way along and then when you get to this end, you should just sew it normally, okay? The elastic's on there now. And then what you want to do is set a bigger stitch width length on your machine. 
and then sew across the bottom but don't back stitch okay because what you want to do is you want to grab the tails and get separate them and then separate the tails on the bottom on the other on the other end Now on this end I'm going to have the top thread and on this end I'm going to pull the bottom thread and we just want to gather the pocket. Alright, I'll gather so there it is nicely gathered up so we can sit that one aside now and next we want our D1 and I'm pretty sure it's called D2 yeah it is D2 pockets and we're going to attach the zipper to that now I think it tells you which zipper on page seven yeah it does page seven for the length of the zipper that you need oh there's only two left so it's obviously the smaller one because that big one will be our top and we're going to go and attach the zipper to these followers the same as we just did with our other zippered pocket over there okay so we're going to go face down, so right sides together on the bottom of your D1 pocket and then we'll turn it to the other side, stitch down the raw edges and then we will put it onto the bottom one as well, okay? So now that that one is on, what we want to do is face down on the big one and match up your sides here okay so we're just going to put some clips on there And that will just prevent any movement so they will stay lined up and then we can sew the zipper down and then flip it and enclose the raw edges again okay just like that alrighty so that's all finished and when you do finish um, sewing the zipper in you need to then measure from top to bottom and you'll find the measurement on page 8 you need to trim your pocket down okay all right so now what we need to do is we need to get in and put some marks on here because we're going to attach the handle and the facing so we need the back facing because this is the back pocket so that one I'll put on there this one I'll put on the front because it's got better heads on it all right so I'll take this over and I'll put the measurements down so next up what we want to do on page 8 there's measurements and we need to mark a line from the top down side to side all right all the way to the edge and then a second measurement from the top down to here and come along and then from the left side in there's another measurement we need to mark which is right here 
and also from the right side in there's another measurement okay then we take our handle and place it down so the bottom of our handle is aligned with the bottom mark pin it down make sure the seam is on the bottom and then making sure that your handle is not twisted bring it up and around and down the other side and you want them inside this mark here okay so have them on the inside of that mark and then down to the bottom here and the same with this one you want it on the inside we're then going to go and stitch our X within these two marks and our box to attach our handles so we'll do that on both and then once you do that we're going to take our facing and we're going to put it down and stitch it down all four sides one eighth okay So it'll look like that all right so when it comes to this facing make sure you have your D ring on the right hand side and you want the bottom of your binding here to line up with that first mark that we made okay so it will end up looking like that there will be a little bit below it of the actual top of this pocket okay so it'll look like that like that and it will cover the stitching that we made to attach the handle down so that's what the handles should look like attached one handle anyway all right, I'll go put the facing on. Here we have the finished pocket. Looking lovely. So we can sit that aside. Then it's time to do the zipper strip. So we, what we want to do is put the, attach the zipper you know like we have been on the other pockets over there so when we put it on and then you want to sew it down okay like we normally do enclose all your raw edges then on page nine there are some measurements okay You've got to measure in from the end. Measure in from the right and a certain distance here and put a line. And then measure in from this end. Same distance from the top down, put your line and then measure from this line to this line so it measures a certain distance and connect the two once you do that you want to take your ruler get it on this point here and angle it down to that corner all right do the same on this end And then repeat those steps on the bottom part okay so you're going to measure from here in do that at a certain width from here in do it and then make sure it measures a certain distance from here to here and then connect this corner on your diagonal down alrighty Alrighty, so I went ahead and stitched one eighth on the inside of the lines that we drew 
okay and then I cut it off so that's what your zipper strip should look like okay Alrighty lovelies, next we want to do our side strip. So we want our side strip there and we want our stabilizer sleeve. Okay, and we have to turn under the short ends and then stitch them down because the raw edges here are going to be caught in our side seams. But these ends, obviously, they're going to be left open. So to deal with the raw edges, what we're going to do, well, what I did is what you need to do is fold them under a quarter, okay, and then fold it again half. So you're actually doing three quarters right on each end okay and to get that accurate what I done is I put a bit of double-sided quarter inch here I peeled it and then I turned it okay you can see that this edge here has been turned then I put another piece and I'm going to lift that Hang on. I didn't uh, hit it with the end to make sure it's stuck. So if you notice, I put it right at the edge of the fold. Okay. It's a bit hard when you don't have it on a flat surface there we go and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this over and that will be the new crease like here okay so I'll fold it to there and that will give me the correct measurement There we go. And then I'll just go and take that to the machine and sew along the edge. And then I'll repeat those steps on this end. And we'll sew both those edges down. So there it is there. And what we want now is the side strip. And we want to mark, measure in from the left, in from the right, and put two marks down, vertical. And what I did is I done a few measurements to try and ascertain where I thought the base, best guess of where the base might be is. Um, and then I went and added some feet. So I'm, I'm assuming like I put the, the bag back down and sort of calculated the curves and stuff. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I've got it right. So we'll see when we'll put it together anyway. And then what we want to do is put this over the top. And then just stitch it down each side okay not across here okay we just do these two sides here so on page 10 there's some measurements you want to measure from the top down 
and from the bottom up draw your angle down cut that away I sewed it and then cut it away once we sew down here with the um, stabilizer sleeve stabilizer you want to on page 10 there's a measurement and from the top of your um, let me get it from the top of your hang on why is that like that there we go like so okay so it's not much that you measure all right measure in and then take that point and angle it down to the line we drew here okay and then you measure down again from the top and then take that to the point that we had okay that's the measurement we had so you angle it down and then I went and sewed one eighth and then I cut them off and you do that on both ends alrighty all right so that is that done okay next we want to get our zipper strip and make sure you put your pulls on yeah so across the ends and trim that tape off because that is uh, just going to be in our way now okay so so across both ends and we want um, right sides together grab a few clips here and we want to match up our ends like so do this end also Then we want to take it to the machine and sew a quarter inch seam across both ends. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, so it's sewn down with the quarter inch. Then we want to get our binding, which is the last bit of um, straight binding, I'm pretty sure, left that we had to cut. And We'll fold it fold it in half. Where to put my clips? There we go. Clip it down. Okay, what we want to do is we want to go and sew a quarter inch seam, all right, then once you sew the quarter inch, 
go and sew one eighth and three eighths okay but make sure that you're doing it on the zipper side if that makes sense so don't go and sew it like that so that might be so your like seam is this way yeah um how can i do it here so your seam is like this way here and then you know with your binding and all that because then that's going to be going oh sorry don't do it this way and everything because then when you go to do your binding it's going to be going up that way you see and that won't work so it needs to be sewn on the top like this here all right and once you've done that you see we then fold that down and then this comes over and then you sew that down along this edge here alrighty and then that's that done until we attach it to the bag which is not that far away we're very 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 close to doing that alrighty so go and do both ends all right then we want to get um, our bag front and like our bag back uh, sorry the pocket that we done this one here all right we want to go and make our measurement from the top down measurements are on page 10 then there's another measurement okay from the top down go from side to side with our two lines you see I'm using the um, air uh, the air rays and it doesn't last long so they're fading very quickly and then we want to measure from the outside in okay and then there's another measurement we need to do from the top down we didn't do that on the other one but I'm assuming this would be for the flap okay so We'll then go and put our handles down the same as we did last time all right on the inside of the line do your square which stops you know starts here stops here all right then make sure your strap is not twisted when you bring it around to curve it and that the seam is down all right and put that down so guys um next up on the pattern after we do this is on page 11 there's some more measurements that is that it wants us to put down here down here and then across here okay now i read into it and this is so when we put this here on like so we then sew down these lines and sew a little bit across here to make these into pen pockets so that way the flap totally encloses this central pocket um to be honest i have absolutely no use for something of that size down here okay to me for my purposes that's a pointless it, it's wasting a pocket 
so I'm not going to do that on my bag um, I don't want to put in two useless little bits here I really don't I would prefer to have access to the pocket even if the flap is only like th three quarters covers it you know um, it's the idea is is so that the flap totally covers the access to this pocket um, but I myself have absolutely no use for this yeah like that's not a lot of anything really so I'm not going to do it I'm not going to divide my bag and and the going across here is to stop the pens going down too far and you're not being able to gain access because you've got to stop and remember this here is going to be bound okay so you're going to lose probably that stripe there so you're only going to have that that there so to me I don't I really don't see the point like each to their own you guys it might be useful for whatever you might want to use on your bag or whatever but for me no I'm just gonna set that one out so if you want to do that please go ahead and do those steps if not um, just leave them out for now and if you yeah decide you don't want to put them in what we'll do is we'll just ignore those steps because you're meant to mark them in and then we put this on so I'm going to take this over and I'm going to sew down three edges of it down the side across the bottom and up the other side and um, if you decide you want that as dividers in then sew down this side come across will actually come down so in come back come down across then up then back down across go up come back do across the bottom up the side in back and up and then that way you're not having to stop and start with your threads yeah you're keeping it as one just continuous stitch so if I was to put the dividers in that is how I would do it but to me they're pointless so I'm not going to do it so yeah I'm going to take this bad boy over to my machine and I'm going to sew that down and then the next step is to put the flap up here and you line it up with that bottom mark there and we'll get in you just measure it make sure it is the right measurements make sure your magnet lines up like they connect up fine um, <coughs> excuse me my throat um, if that all works fine then just uh, go ahead and stitch along the top there alrighty um, quarter edge seam quarter inch seam what am I talking about edge quarter inch seam guys alrighty so I'll get in and I'll do that so here I've attached the pocket and the flap oh bonking you guys and I sat the facing on there and I just put a couple of pins in it to hold it but that's how it should be sitting okay so you want this here lined up with that top mark like before and then we're going to go and stitch all four edges of the facing so next up we are doing pocket B which is on the back of the front of our bag okay so this it was optional mesh pocket um, and I was just thinking about it then 
before I went to talk to you guys and you could always divide this and have two zippers here if you wanted to um, because this is a big pocket so you know a division down here and you still got two good size pockets that are divided if you wanted to do that I would do it before you put this on all right so then it's not going to interfere with this front pocket all right guys so what we're up to is the pocket B now I've said this just a second ago but then I was getting technical with pocket divisions and everything else so I thought I'd stop doing that and I'd just do what I wanted and throw it out there for you guys it's up to you guys if you choose how to do it okay so as per pattern um, you just stitch down all four edges all right and that is how the pattern wants you to do it what I did is I added another zipper pull to mine and I stitched across the top and down and then I done a division straight here all right and all I done on the front was I pinned my handle out of the way and I made sure my flap was up when I was sewing up here okay so it comes to the very top of the flap and then that's given me two good size pockets here the flap still acts as a closure yes it's not a full closure but like I was saying once you add the binding here these pockets for me myself they're going to be too small and I'm not going to use them so I would prefer to leave them bigger I will use that so that's what I ended up doing. It's up to you guys how you want to do it. Okay. So once we've done that, we sit that out of the way. Now this is divided, but it is not divided all the way up here. So that is still open. All right. So that's done. Sorry. No. Before we sit that aside, we need to do some measurements for the rounding of our bag okay so on page 12 you'll see a measurement where you want to measure in from the side and put a mark in from the other side and put a mark and we're going to then run a line from that mark on the diagonal again like we did with our zipper strip and side strip down to this corner and we will end up rounding that corner and down and rounding these ones too okay but for now we just want to put those two marks and also there's another mark it wants you to put um, top and bottom there okay so I marked mine there and then you can see it again down here just there All right, so yes, I will. I'll round the corners now, actually. So I'll do that and I'll come back to you guys. Okay, everyone, I went in and done my line down. Okay, and then put your circular object there to get your curve. Same here, that's the line, goes down, which gives you your other point of reference in which to put the next circular object, and it meets up with that line there, and then I rounded that corner, so I'll stitch these, I'll stitch just inside that line, and then I'll cut it all off okay but for now I'm just going to sit that aside next up we want to take our bag back 
and our gathered pocket C. Now on it, it wants you to measure from the top down. My lines are fast fading. Okay, from the top down and draw a horizontal line across. I just done dash marks. I didn't see the need for a solid line there. It's just as a guide anyway. And then from the outside in, it wants you to measure and draw a line. And from this outside in and draw a line up. Then we get the pocket C. Now, in the pattern it says to put it down, okay, and one eighth around the three edges. And then you're meant to do your line connecting from the one you done here down your pocket here and here so it brings it from being underneath the pocket where you put it originally on the bag back to on top of the pocket to do your division. I didn't see the point in putting it on the actual bag back. I just put a marker because pocket goes straight over the top of it. What's the point? So I just put a marker and then measured in and done my actual line on my gathered pocket for there and for there because I'm going to do it a bit differently. So what I did is I pinned it all down and I'm now going to sew one eighth down across. I'm going to go up and back. Then I'm going to come across. I'm going to come up and back and then across again and up this side and finish off. Whereas the pocket wants you to just do the three outer edges, then do these lines separately. I don't see the point in that. So to me, that's the easier way. Then we need to go and mark in like we did on the bag front. Okay, these measurements are on page 13. And from the other side, sorry about that guys, from the other side over and then angle it down to our corner. Okay, and that's on both sides. You can see my angle there. And then take your circular rulers, curve your top and curve both bottoms. Okay, get this stitch down and then sit it on that and stitch all four edges. Don't forget to put your pull on though because you're going to be sewing over your zipper tape. Okay, so make sure you do have your puller on otherwise you're going to have to go and have a date with Jack and unpick it and put him on and do it again. Alright, I'll be back with yous. So there we have it everyone. It is sewn down. The other pocket is sewn down. And what we want to do now here is the front. It's all trimmed up also. Looking lovely. Now what we want to do is we want to mark our centers on our zipper strip. Okay? best way to do that is to grab these two points join them up like so run your fingers along and you'll get the center so mark that on each side then You match them up and it'll give you the center. Why isn't that? Yeah, 
Yep, there we go. There and there. And then this here is the sides. Okay. So then what we want to do is take either the bag front or back and line them up and clip them. So find your center on the bottom. center on the top remember to keep your flat on here on the bag body okay so then I would get my side where's the other oh, I've cut it off I'm a dodo head I didn't mark it in far enough. Hang on a minute. Okay, guys, I have that attached. But once I did do it, um, I'm seriously thinking about attaching the back first instead of the front because the front is so much stiffer given the flap and everything here. So when it comes time to attach the zipper strip to this part, if we do it first, it's going to be then done. And then when we attach the back, we're going to have to manhandle this. And you know yourself how you've, you've really got to manhandle your bags to get them down in there. This is a lot thicker. It's going to be a lot harder to manhandle whereas if we do this one first it's more flexible more pliable it's going to be easier to mush down and get it in there to be able to join them um, once it's on and then when we go to do this one this one's going to be easier so I'm gonna quickly put you guys on hold again remove it from the front attach it to the back Okay. Bit of a annoyance, but it is what it is. Very exciting Niall guys on the home stretch. Look at that, look at that. Wow. See? So now I'm gonna get in and bind that. So I'll bind that because then that's one binding that I've got less bulk that I have to manage. So I'll get a beautiful finish on that. And then I'll get in and add the front. Alrighty. There we go, lovelies. All done. And it has turned out stunning. Look at that. nameplate looks gorgeous I did divide it up here there's a magnet closure on each side the feet are in the perfect position there there's the strap so the strap just there please excuse my son it's his day off and him and his mates are gaming if you can hear him there so there's the back the sides I'm definitely going to clip it overnight to make the binding here sit right so it sits you see how it see how it's not sort of sitting like it should there like that so I'm definitely gonna clip that binding just to compress it a bit and make it stay down I am so glad I did the front part last because if that had been done first with the binding trying to manhandle that to do the other side would not have been very pleasant but in saying that um, it was very easy to bind 
the, the binding in here was a lot easier than I expected. Um, one of the easiest ones so far I found. So yeah, I'm very happy with it. I put my, I don't use acrylic um, in the base. There I have a quite a stiff um, stabilizer that I put in there. I um, don't know if you can sort of see it in there. But I slot that in and I find that works brilliantly and keeps down the weight of the actual bag too. So there you have your three gathered pockets. And then flip it around and like I said I did divide that pocket. There's my two pulls. So yeah, very, very, very happy with it, guys. So I am. So I hope you um, get a chance to do this one and it turns out to your liking. I, um, I will probably be making more of these in my future. I can see it happening. So I can. But yes, the binding was one of the more easier ones to do. And I just put a few clips on that and it was only on there for like maybe a minute and that is already sitting better. So I do highly recommend if it's not conforming to see how I mean, how it's not conforming to its shape. It's sort of concaving in there. That's the binding not wanting to play nice. Certainly does not want to play well with others. So it doesn't. So I would definitely recommend like that. You see, and I have noticed it is in uh, the way that you bind that it, it does this. I've noticed, um, in, and what I mean by that is, uh, uh, gee, it's hard. How do I explain it? Okay, um, I think the easiest way to explain it would be. Um, I think if I was to put the binding on on the flat part first and then fold it over to there, this here would have sat differently. The binding would have sat differently once finished. Um, but I bound this part first and then it came over and onto here last. And so it sort of... Yeah, well, that's what I think anyway. I think if I had of sort of bound from here that way, I think it would sit differently um, at the end of it. So that's certainly going to be something I'm going to experiment with anyway. And I will let you guys know in uh, future videos of whether or not my assumptions, assumption, assumptions, are correct okay lovelies I'm gonna get going I need to do up a list I need to clip this and then I need to get in and do up a list and get all the hardware and everything needed for uh, the retreat that I've got to do because I am fast running out of time and then I also want to get in um, I need to get a computer carrier bag made a subscriber asked if I could do one, but um, I don't have the pattern for the one they actually asked for, but I do have one of the other patterns, and I did ask a question back as to whether or not um, that one would be okay, because they uh, left the comment on my video where I put up, you know, photos of the patterns that I currently have, um, so I, I think they were meaning that one, but I just want to clarify. And if it's not, whether or not they would be happy, oh, shoot, that scared me. If they would be happy with the one I have, or if they were specifically after the other one. So, um, yeah, they haven't gotten back to me yet. And I, I left that quite a while ago. So I don't know if, um, it's going to be okay or not, you know.
so I do want to get that done in case it is sufficient oh I know what's happening it's the zip pull is there that's why it keeps popping off on me um, so yeah I get that done but I want to try and get a another um, ultimate travel bag main because I want it in the same I want to have matching for my holiday well my working holiday um, in the same fabric line so I want want to do one in the same fabric line so I'm going to use the um, fluoro orange one oops I'm knocking you guys around the fluoro orange that pattern in the fluoro orange with the purple giraffes um, on the pockets so I've got still quite a bit of work I've got to get done and I am fast running out of time I think I have less than four weeks now before I go um, which is sort of I'm feeling a bit torn because I um, I'm not getting as many videos done as I would like because of uh, having to do do this so I'm sort of yeah they're not going to be as regular at at the moment guys until I get back <clears throat> um, from this retreat then I'll be able to get back on top of it and um, hopefully sort of keep to what I was doing where I was able to put out two I think one week there or two weeks running I was able to do um, two so if I can um, I would like to try and stick to that it's not easy because you know life does get in the way of things and these do take quite a lot long time to video so yeah and then there's all the editing as well um, but you know we do what we can so that's all we can do and uh, yeah I've also got um, the switchback cut out too because I had this one I've had this one cut out for a while and I just other projects I was getting asked to do others um, subscribers were wanting other ones so I was doing them and then this one would just kept sitting there and I really wanted it for the retreat so that's why I wanted to get in and get this one done but like you know I don't mind doing the ones that my subscribers ask for because it's you guys that I'm doing them for you know what I mean so if there's a particular one that you're wanting I'm quite happy to do it that's not a problem but uh, I do have the switchback cut out and I do really want to do that so I think that'll probably be one of the first ones that I do when I come back I'm thinking because um, I'm very excited to do that one and it was an absolute dream to do this on the industrial it's um, yeah very surprising it was uh, now all my clips on the bottom are popping off yep there they go poppity pop like popcorn okay that's all right all right guys well I won't hold you up anymore so thank you for joining me and uh, I hope you enjoy this video Bye for now. Catch you on the next one.